Yeah, right. Hi, and welcome to Rick's. I'm Rick. I know, I know. Uh, we're expecting another couple, Dr. and Mrs. Alborn. Oh, well, I'll take care of it. However, sir, I'm sorry, we can't seat you without a tie. What? What is this? It's a house rule. But you're not wearing a tie. Well, when you can look as good as I do without one, we waive the rule. <laughs> However, don't worry about it. You'll find a tie in the check room. Okay, I'll go put one on. Let's see it. Yeah. And you come in. All right, thank you. Thanks. You know, you're really a very nice couple. Thank you very much. You know, sometimes I think about settling down. I mean, I see people in here like you two, in love, not jiving each other. And I know that they'll never be alone. That from here on in, they're going to spend their whole lives together, sharing it all. And I say to myself, Rick, why don't you settle down? And an answer comes to me, because most of them are miserable and you're flying high. <laughs> She is. Hi, oh, it feels weird to hug you without a child between us. Oh, I know. I'm so used to being pregnant that every time I get up, I feel like I forgot something. <laughs> what are you doing? What? You, you're sitting down like a pregnant woman. A force of habit. Oh, you look great. You must feel great. Funny, I don't feel great. What is it, Susie? I don't know. It's either me or Arthur. I prefer to think it was Arthur. I've been married to him for 12 years now. Rhoda, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Is he an okay guy? Uh, no, I know he's okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's just a problem all psychiatrists have. God, he's so unemotional, you know, so um, controlled. No matter what happens, you can't ruffle him. He's uh, unruffleable. Wait, that's a wrong expression, isn't it? I think the correct expression would be, he is beyond ruffability. <laughs> if you are having trouble with Arthur... You... Why is it whenever I come in, you two stop talking? Well, we don't do that. We don't do that at all, do we? Never. <sighs> okay, I'll go get us all a drink. Like I was saying, I think you may be making it now. Tricked ya. <laughs> and for that reason, I adore sewing. Hi, hi, how are you? Oh, there you go, Sorry I'm late. Boy, you wouldn't believe that cross-town traffic. All the cars and trucks and buses backed up for blocks and blocks. People yelling and screaming at each other. Oh, I really feel for you, Arthur. I know what you went through. I, I go crazy when that happens to me. Why? <laughs> because, uh, well, didn't it affect you? Well, actually, it was quite nice. I got to read the paper. It was kind of an oasis in the midst of a hectic day. <laughs> You're calling a traffic jam an oasis? <laughs> Dr. Alborn has a phone call for you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Aren't you going to react? Aren't you going to say anything? No, not right at this moment. Uh, immediate reaction is often an inappropriate reaction, but I'm sure that once I think about it, I'll come up with something suitable. Oh, uh, Arthur! Uh, 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 That's an inappropriate reaction. Back to Monroe, 20-foot jumper, no switch. Crazy, they're in the fourth quarter here. What? No, are you crazy? They're in the fourth quarter here. A simple no, Joseph. That's all it takes. No. Got it. <laughs> Hello. Hiya, Susie. How you feeling? And how's it going? Shh. Come on, baby, right. please. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, still a rather unusual thing to do, but I gotta right, hand right, it to right, you. Right. Yeah, do you still think hey, it's a good I don't thing? ask that much, do I? Joe, I'm at the end of my cord. And I'm at the end of my cord. <laughs> Susie, this is not a good time for me to talk to you. There is a crazed person in the room. <laughs> uh, could you come over here? Terrific. I'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Listen, babe, I'm really sorry about that, but I missed three points with that apology. <laughs> Could I turn off the spaghetti sauce, or is that too noisy? <laughs> Come on in, Brad. Hi, Ronald. What are you doing? I'm making spaghetti. Real spaghetti.
spaghetti? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't get out of my mind, Brenda. It looked so good on Arthur the other night. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Shh. What's wrong with the... Uh... Thin ice time. Do you want to stick around? Uh, Susie's coming over in a few minutes. Oh, all the way from Scarsdale? No, no, she's staying at the Plaza Hotel. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you. What? Hey, could this be done in the other room? Sure thing. Will you help us move the stove? <laughs> Forget it. It's okay. They're into a commercial now. Oh, that's good. I'll time myself. Brenda, you want to play Beat the Clocks? Susie <laughs> and I have been having a lot of tension lately, which I don't understand because he's not deeply into sports. No, anyway, they came up with this terrific solution whereby Susie would have two weeks alone by herself, a little vacation in New York City, which she started five days ago. Now, Arthur's had to cut back office hours because he can, has to take care of the children, right? So Susie and he are doing all this so that she has more space for herself in which to be with herself. And that's what I didn't tell you before, which I forgot. End of story. <laughs> Good thing I didn't have to tell you the kids' names. Hey, uh, Joe, can you tell me when the next commercial is? Because I've got a huge problem in my life. Okay, Brenda. <clears throat> what if I watch it down at your place? Oh, sure, thanks. Oh, the key is under the mat. Spread the word. <laughs> okay, Rhoda, I met the most extraordinary man. Oh, all right, all right, all right, right. You don't have to talk fast. He left. Oh, well, anyway, I didn't want to tell you about him when I first met him because I didn't want to jinx it. Now there's nothing left to jinx. Mm. Rhoda, he is so terrific. He sells pianos. And you want to hear a really ironic thing? He sells pianos, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what his name is? Steinway? Bench. <laughs> yeah, Douglas Bench. Rhoda, he stopped calling me. And I think the reason is what happened the other night. Oh, yeah? Tell me what happened the other night. Well, it was one of those evenings, you know, when you've been going out for a while and right. you're at his place. It's two o'clock in the morning. The rain's falling against the window. Oh, yes, I've heard rumors of such evenings. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rhoda, he took me in his arms and he held me. I mean, the real stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Then I told him the truth, but I think it was the wrong thing to say. What did you say? I hope you don't mind. I stink at this. <laughs> I love you, Bren. They won't with lines like that, but I do. Yeah. I do. I truly do. Yeah. Anyway, well, I just came up to borrow some stationery because I want to write him a really mature note to tell him how I feel. Yeah, well, how come he can't use your stationery? It's got Snoopy on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, go in the desk there. Oh, Left-hand side. Oh, yeah. yeah, Carlton. I just set up your friend, Susan Alborn. Thank you, thank you. You know she looks great? Could you find out what her diet is? I'm trying to lose a few pounds. What diet, Carlton? She had a baby. Oh, I think I'll stick with the drinking man's diet. Oh, here she is. Hi, Hi. Is. <laughs> Hi Sue. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Oh, look at you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is the first dress that I have had in eight years without drool on the shoulder. <laughs> Uh, listen, well, I gotta get going. I sure hope this note works. Because if it doesn't, I gotta buy a piano. <laughs> so long. Bye. So, so, you're having a good time. I'm having a wonderful time. You know, Susie, I really admire you and Arthur. I mean, a lot of people allow their marriages to grow, but you two get in there and really work up a sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrific. You want some tea? Oh, sure. <laughs> okay, I'll admit it isn't perfect. Why not perfect? Because I, I cry all the time. <laughs> Susie, why? Well, because Arthur hasn't called me and he says I can't call him because he said I said I wanted time for myself, which I have. Boy, do I have. 16 hours a day in a luxurious hotel room. It's really nice, huh? Oh, yeah, the plaza. I mean, I figure if I'm going to be miserable, I might as well go first class. <laughs> Rhoda? <laughs> Rhoda, why did this great idea get so fouled up? I mean, all I wanted was a little time, you know, away from the house. I just, I just wanted Arthur to say that he loved me and that he missed me and that he needed me, and he hasn't. Rhoda, I think the dirty son of a gun snuck in a separation on me. <laughs>
I don't know. I think that you should do what you want to do. Ah, I want to go to the top of the Empire State Building and scream, Arthur Alvar, and stop being so smart and hug me. Well, then you should do it. I did it yesterday. <laughs> Well, this woman got her brownie troop out so fast you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, but I felt better, you know. Rhoda, what am I gonna do? Oh, why don't you call Arthur? He said I shouldn't call him. That's our deal. Gosh, I'm scared. What if he doesn't care about me anymore? Oh, Susie, come on. Rhoda, you've got to find out if he does. You've got to find out for me. Yeah. That's it. That is it. You will go to the office hold and you'll it, just talk it, to him. Hold you'll it, say, hold it. You want me to ask the man you have been married to for 12 years, who is the father of your six children, if he likes you? <laughs> it's easy to make a fool out of me, Rhoda. Oh, come on, Susie. Now, you got to admit, that is not a normal thing to ask somebody to do. I know. I know it sounds crazy. It does. I know you hate to do this, but you're the only person in the world that can save me. Save you? Save me. Oh. Okay, okay, Susie. For you, thank I will do it. Thank right. you, I thank you, Rhoda, and I'll right. be forever grateful. Right. This is my life is really on the line here. So don't screw it up. I'm with a patient. You're not supposed to knock. I'll let you know when we can have lunch, but don't knock. Oh. Interruptions like this can send patients back weeks of therapy. I'm so sorry. $3,000 worth of analysis to get me to the point where I could sit next to somebody instead of sitting over there. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Did you ever notice at a restaurant counter how, how people always leave a space between them? Uh -huh. uh, well, not anymore, boy, because I sit right down next to everybody. <laughs> uh, if, if that's true, why are you still coming to the doctor? Because I'd like to do it without talking about it. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm 2 o'clock. What time is your appointment? Oh, I'm not a patient. <laughs> I used to say that, too. <laughs> uh, excuse me, if you are two o'clock, uh, why are you here an hour early? So I can practice sitting next to people. <laughs> I was so glad to see someone here. <laughs> you, you know what I haven't had the courage to do before now? Ask a girl I never met to go out with me. Oh, listen, Will Mr. you go out with me? <laughs> Look, look, I'm married. I cannot go out with you. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh. oh, doctor, I never felt vulnerable till today. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. Can I see you a minute, doctor? Oh, well, I was uh, going to lunch. I just need a few minutes to release some hostility. All right, all right, come on. <laughs> That's what he thinks. Great man. Great man. I don't know a lot about Dr. Alborn's work, but I, apparently seating has a lot to do with it. <laughs> i got to get control of myself. I, I have to perform surgery in half an hour. <laughs> Rhoda, can I see you for a moment? I'm afraid there's some problems you and George have you should work on. George? You mean that... Don't say it. George. Excuse me. <laughs> George, you wanted to say something. Yeah. I understand you're married. I'm sorry. I, I thought you weren't telling the truth. Oh, that's okay, George. I understand. I, I really do want you to know I am very sorry. <laughs> he 
Chi. <laughs> no. This is uh, difficult to explain, but today was a very good day for George. I'm glad. It's a kind of big day for me, too, Arthur. You know, this is my first time ever in a psychiatrist's office. And I always wondered what they look like. How'd you picture it? Oh, I don't know. A leather couch and a uh, desk chair. A couple of paintings, diplomas. <laughs> Uncanny. <laughs> Look, uh, let's forget about lunch today, Arthur. See, the reason I'm here is, well, because Susie's upset. And I got elected to come and talk to you. I mean, you know how it is. <laughs> Do I know how it is? I went to school to know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Does this make you uncomfortable? No, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> Look, Rhoda, maybe I can save you some time. Susie and I have an agreement, you see. She wanted some time for herself, uh, a little more space, so I shifted everything around and give her a little vacation, you know. Well, I think if she comes back early, she won't have learned from the experience, and I think that it's important she not see me. But, Arthur, Susie is really upset. Upset? <laughs> yeah. Rhoda. Rhoda. Rhoda, have you ever gone down the Colorado River in a raft, shot the rapids? No. Oh, I have a couple of times. And let me tell you, it's exactly where, what Susie's doing, you see. Once you make a decision to go from point A to point B, there's no turning back. You're going over the rapids and you might get wet. Now, Susie knew that. Yeah, but why did Susie take the bridge to get from point A to point B? The bridge is way out of the way. <laughs> So she still should have taken the bridge. I mean, it's better than getting soaked. It's a toll bridge, and she didn't have any chain. <laughs> <laughs> so she sneaks past the guard. No way. How come? I'm the guard. Yeah, but she snuck past that guard before. I'm trying to make a point here, and you're making fun of my analogy. But listen, we're being too serious about this. You know? I mean, it's not so serious. What the heck now? You know, Susie's coming over tonight to our place for dinner. Wouldn't it be cute if you surprised her, you know, just out of the blue? Cute? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, Susie will be there, Arthur, not expecting you. Then you show up, that's very cute. I'm not good at cute. Oh, come on, yes, you are. I mean, you'll, you'll both be giggling, you know, from the surprise and kissing and hugging and being together. Terrific. Come on, now, don't tell me that you won't be very happy to see her face light up when you stick your cute face through the door and say, Surprise, Susie, I'm here, surprise! Okay, you don't have to do the hands. But it'll be, it, it will... You know something, you're right, Arthur, you're not good at cute. <laughs> Listen, if that doorman of yours says once more, where'd the bowling ball go, I'm going to let him have it. <laughs> I'll speak to him right now. No, no, don't bother. It's just the mood I'm in right now because of what happened between you and Arthur this afternoon. Hey, Susie, that's water under the bridge. Oh, Joe, please, no more bridge talk. <laughs> hey, listen, ladies, why don't we all just sit down and have a terrific evening? And just forget about our troubles, huh? That's a wonderful idea, Joe. And you're a wonderful man. <laughs> just like the one I used to have. <laughs> yes, Carlton? Your friend Susie is on her way up. Oh, Carlton, she's already here. Oh, sorry, but I'm really busy tonight. I got him stacked up down here. <laughs> Carlton, please, there's somebody at my door. Must have slipped by me. <laughs> Come on, come, come on, come, come on, please. You don't stand there in the cold. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, it doesn't matter what the reason is. I'm glad to see you. I could use a good psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Hostile. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think what you two need is uh, some privacy. Yeah. Joe, it's such a nice night. Come on with me uh, out on the terrace. Well, don't you think we should bring off... Coats. I think he was going to say coats. <laughs> Boy, they're going to turn into a block of ice out there. Okay, Arthur, let's talk. But they're going to be cold. 
Oh, you're ducking the issue and I want to talk. I mean, poor kids. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I've always liked considerate people, but even at 35 degrees... Arthur, are we going to talk? Well, Susie, I just think it's interesting the way they... <laughs> Look at them now. See? I mean, well, they've even wrapped themselves in the Chase Lounge cushion. Arthur! <laughs> Susie, I can't stand here and talk about us while I'm standing here watching people freeze. Okay, you wanted to talk about us. Let's talk about us. Go ahead, Susan. Well, it's this one thing that's really become big to me. No, not really big. Huge. What's bothering me is you're too controlled a person. I would give anything if you would allow yourself to be more emotional, to, to show more feelings. Could you please, Arthur? We can discuss it. <laughs> All right, Susan. I think you're one of the most intelligent women I've ever met. And if you've known a man for 18 years and been married to him for 12 and have had six kids with him, then you're smart enough to know he's not going to change. This is who I am. I'm sorry, I can't help it. This finally is being Arthur. <gasps> We were just thinking that if uh, you guys have, have, have to talk more, to, try the terrace. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're finished nearly, and uh, there's nothing you can't hear. Which happens to be our trouble. Oh, Susan, it would be very easy for me to pretend emotion, to hug you, to, to be very affectionate. It's just not me. Oh, really? Well, what would you do if you were? Oh. Now you're going to embarrass me by making this a demonstrative situation. Oh, I see. I knew it. So you're hugging me in front of Joe and Rhoda. I mean, it's still the same old Arthur. What does this prove? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. So we'll sit here and we'll continue the charade, but it will solve nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's just silly. I give up. I don't even know why I try. It was even predictable that I wouldn't get away with it. Everything is so predictable with us. Why does everything always have to be so predictable? Predictable? Okay. Predict this. Arthur! <laughs> had a lovely evening. Sorry we had to run. This is the time you move! Don't fight it, Arthur. You are cute. <laughs> Come on, get out of here! Now, this is what I call a feat. <laughs> I know. It's more for me. Yes, Carlton? Why did your friend carry his wife out of here over his back? <laughs> Our friend carrying his... Carlton, I think he had one too many. Oh, good. Last night I had seven too many. <laughs> Carlton, I'm 